Ladies and gentlemen, today you're going to learn about some fashion trends at the gym that you just need to know are coming down the pike. Is it pike or pipe? I don't know. But these things could be happening because you know the hot cities are the places these trends start. So we're, I'm going to share those with you so you know what's coming. We're also going to talk about some kind of crazy, annoying bachelorette party stuff that I see happening in like every major city. And it's driving me crazy. Plus, my frustration with automation. I can't be the only one. I'm going to share with you what's going on in our lives, where we're heading next, talk to you about having a parenting mentor and the embarrassingly g thoughts I have when my ADHD really kicks into overdrive. All right, that and so much more today on The Shaleen Show. So we are winding down our time here in Miami and it has been amazing. In two weeks, we're leaving for Europe and I'm already getting a little freaked out about the packing situation. Like, first of all, because we've been here for months, it looks like we've lived here for years. I have so much that needs to be donated or shipped back to California or just thrown away. I need to minimize, minimize, minimize. Like I'm, I'm so determined this time to go to Europe and to know how to travel. Like I, I'm just, every day I'm mentally preparing. Every day I'm asking myself, what will I really need? And I feel like I'm going to nail it this year. I've decided based on some great feedback from you that I am, I'm not even going to travel with like my blow dryer and my hot iron. It, I'm just, I'm going to buy them there so that they're already European compatible with their, their plugs and stuff. I bought all of the packing cubes. Now they sell compression packing cubes. I'm on it. I did my research and found the very best hanging toiletry bags. I found this way to use Wi-Fi internationally or when you travel that, I mean, I, I can't say for sure this is going to work, but I've watched video after video after video after video about this app that allows you to use what's called an e-SIM card. So instead of having to buy a wireless router and then buying a SIM card in that country, which sounds like so technical, I'm already lost. I found all these videos on TikTok and on YouTube that explain that everyone's phones, almost everyone's, like most of the new phones now have an e-SIM card, which basically means you can turn it on, your phone is unlocked, which mine is from now, from Verizon. You just, there's like different settings you can check and see if your phone is uh, unlocked, whatever that means. It also sounds very techy. And then you download this app called, I think it's pronounced Aralo, Air, Aralo or something. It looks like Air Allo to me, but anyways, it's like so cheap for like 20 bucks you get five gigs of data which is a ton and you can upgrade it and get more gigs if you want when we were in europe last year with verizon like every day midday it would say like do you want to disconnect from your service here but you've run out of data for another 20 dollars. would you like more data i'm like we were spending like 20 dollars a day both of us like 40 dollars a day just on data and i'm like we cannot do this again this makes no sense and when you're traveling like it's i don't know your phone died our phones died really fast so i'm like figuring all of this out in advance and i'm so proud of myself and i'm looking back on the notes that i took from last year when we went to europe and the things that i didn't need the things that i overpacked the things that i just did like literally it made life much more complicated than need to be and i'm not going to do it this year this year i'm going to get like an a plus plus rating for myself i'm not i don't need to bring all of my accessories i don't need to bring all of my shoes i can do it i can do it i'm pumping myself up right now now listen i don't need you to comment if you're that person you're like what i packed in a backpack and backpack through europe for 30 days good for you i am not that girl i need options I need variety. I can't just wear a pair of sandals. I can't be traveling throughout Europe with just Birkenstocks and a pair of jean shorts. I ain't that girl. Hello, look at me. I'm so high. Like it is going to be so hard for me to just have like four different types of hoop earrings. You know what I mean? Like if I showed you what I brought here to, to Miami for a couple of months, you'd be like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with me is I enjoy it all. I like all the things. I'm also going to bring my own nail kit because that was a nightmare last time. And I may be doing my own nails. I might just be gluing on like press-ons. I don't know. But I have to have nails because my husband loves nails. It's a whole thing. Like it is not easy. 
traveling, when you are a high maintenance woman. And listen, this is a lot of smoke and mirrors. This this takes an army. It, I don't just wake up and look like this. It's it's a whole thing. And I need to have all the tools and all the accoutrements. Anyway, so we're wrapping up our time here in Miami. We did go to Naples. And so I, I don't want to like, for those of you who listen to Patreon, I I went into depth about Naples. It was lovely. Uh, it's just, I don't think that's where we will want to settle down. It's a little too sleepy for me and I'll leave it at that. Like, it's really nice and it's beautiful, but I don't know. Like I, I said, I explained in my Patreon, I like being an, around people that it just feels like they're ahead. Do you know what I mean? Like, like there's something inspirational about the way they dress or the way they talk or the way they, they, uh, their, their work, the things that they're into. So I I like to be in places where there's lots of, um, culture and variety and things feel like exciting. You know what I mean? And it felt lovely, but it didn't feel exciting. Don't take that the wrong way. Then we went from Tampa to, or sorry, from Naples to Tampa and we, in Tampa, we got to spend uh, Mother's Day weekend with a friend that I met and her family that I met when Brett and I were in college in Michigan State. And it's this great story. So this gal lived across the hall from us and she was like constantly like cleaning and vacuuming. I could always like hear her vacuum cleaner. And we were poor college students, Liz and I, and we didn't have a vacuum. So I went and knocked on her door and said, could I borrow your vacuum? And like from the moment I met her, I'm like, this woman is freaking hysterical. She tells it like it is. And we became lifelong friends. She was older than me. I don't know how much older she'd probably shoot me if I told you, but anyways, um, I think at least wait, she'd have to be like, probably like 16 years older than me. And, um, but she, she was a teacher at Michigan state for people who lived on campus and had children. Right. So she was, she was an educator and, uh, she was dating a basketball player. And I was dating this football player, right? And when she told me that she wanted to marry this guy who was like, I don't know, like 10 or 12 years younger than her, I was like, girl, that's a bad, like, mm, he's a player. He's going to go to Europe and forget about you. Like, I don't think this is the guy you should marry. And there's only one other person I said that gave that advice to, and that was my sister. And my sister's been married for like 30 years. And Kathy Valentine and her husband, Carlton Valentine, have also been married for 30 plus years. So the moral of the story is, if I tell you don't marry that guy, you should marry that guy. (laughs) Because I clearly I do not know. They have an amazing marriage. And they basically became like parenting role models for us. Because she was older. And because they got married before we did, and they, they had children before we did, I watched the way she parented. And I think this is really important for anyone. So most people you look at what your parents did, what your spouse's parents did. Maybe you look at the parents of like, let's say you had some friends and that you, you hung out with in school and you, you love the way they parented and they were great role models. So you, you take all of these things and hopefully you blend them together to come up with the best possible version of your own style of parenting. And, and that's really what we did. Like we looked at what things that Brett's parents did that we thought were helpful, things that my parents did we thought were helpful. And, and but you know, we really like, there are certain things around, you know, this because their kids were so close in our same age that we were really able to learn from them and take advice from them on, on parenting. And obviously they did a phenomenal job because listen, they have two boys. One ends up being the young, well, they both, first of all, get division one scholarships to play basketball. Like that's unheard of. That's absolutely unheard of, right? And then one goes on to get drafted in the NBA in the first round. What, what's the likelihood of that happening? Um, like 0.0001. And then their other son, so that that's uh, um, Denzel gets drafted, uh, plays for the Bulls in the NBA. He's, he's still currently in the NBA. And then uh, their other son, Drew, becomes the youngest, listen to this, the youngest head basketball coach for a D1 school. Like, and I might add the youngest black head basketball coach for a D1 school. The likelihood is like, what? And so anyways, we got to have this conversation 
because they were all there. And I was saying to Drew and Denzel, I'm like, do you understand? Like, this is an anomaly. Like this just, this isn't just DNA. Like this is the influence and the belief that your parents have had into you. And I was, I was reminding them like when they were like really, really little and they would come out and stay with us for the summers, like our kids and their kids became very, very close. And I just remember the way these kids believed in themselves because their parents believed in them. They just poured into them and not in the kind of way where you're like pumping your kid up and making them think that they are all stars when they're not, you know what I mean? But like they really made their, they, it's like that self-fulfilling prophecy. And so I was talking to the boys about this and they were kind of looking at each other like, yeah, it, it's kind of wild, right? And then I was just complimenting Kathy and Carlton and saying, because I was watching them around their granddaughter now. So uh, Drew and his wife, Taylor, the, this is their baby, Hayden. And Hayden was born premature. I think she's born like 27 or 28 weeks. And so she, you know, she has these developmental disabilities that she's struggling with. But at the same time, like the way they are, they, they're like, look at her quadriceps. Look how strong she is. Like, she's amazing. She's a genius. You know, like you can already tell they're, they're, they're instilling in her this drive and determination that's going to, she's going to defy the odds. And that's not just DNA. That is how you pour into your kids, how your parents poured into you. And so just watching them do that now with their grandchild is just such a reminder of how they did that with their kids from the time they were born. They made those kids believe in themselves by giving them experiences where they could prove to themselves that they were capable, that they could do these things. You know, they taught them how to be disciplined. They taught them how to be respectful. They taught them work ethic, but most of all, they gave them the tools they needed to believe in themselves. And I think that's just such a powerful lesson. So if you've got kids, I mean, even, even if your kids are older, it's never too late to teach them that they absolutely have what it takes. And that's not just like, you can't just say those things. You actually have to give kids an opportunity to experience it. But when we were in Tampa, I love Tampa. Like, you know, I, will we live in Miami? I don't know. Will we, I, I definitely think we need to check out a few more areas here that are close to Miami. Cause it feels like Miami is a, it's almost too fast. It's almost too exciting. It, I need a, it to feel a little bit more grounded, but also be able to like go to the exciting places. Do you know what I mean? And so, um, we're, we're still going to look at a few places here in Miami. And Tampa, I don't feel like we had enough time there to decide if that's a place where we could live, maybe. So we'll, we'll definitely go back and check that out again. But you know the thing that I noticed when we were in uh, Tampa? And I, I, you know, look, I'm, I'm noticing this a lot in Miami too. I'm noticing this when we travel to big cities, like New York, wherever, is bachelorette parties are no longer like a bachelorette night. Have you guys noticed this? Like bachelorette, now doing a bachelorette thing is like, it's a three-day event. It's like every hotel that we go to, there's this army brigade of bachelorette bitches. Like, what is going on? And I am so thankful that this was not the trend when I got married because it feels like so much work. Like, I feel so sorry. It, like, I would intentionally start being unfriendly and distant if I had a friend who I knew was about to get engaged because like, I, I do not want to be invited to the bachelorette party because it's, it's a whole thing. I can't imagine what this costs them because now they don't just go out for the night, you know? And like when we were, when I got married back in the day, like, you know, we was like, ah, we got a cake in the shape of a penis. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, so, and you went out dancing and that was it. You know what I mean? That was it. Maybe you went to a dinner, but now it is such a thing. Like they go to Nashville and everyone, there's like nine of them and they have a theme for each and every day. Like one night is like, um, sequin Saturday and everyone has to wear like sequin gowns. And then there, then one of the themes is like feathers. You gotta have like you know, dresses with your boa trim and feathers on the shoes and, um, you know, all that glitters and, and everyone has to wear like all rhinestones and, and these outfits and, and like shoes and hats and matching outfits. And, and then all the dinners and you've got to go, like, you've got to have a, a pool scene. And then they all have to wear like matching bathing suits and matching sarongs and sunglasses. What is
is this costing these women? I, I doubt that the bride's paying for all of it. And it has to be like such an Instagrammable experience with like the balloons and the aesthetics and every, I just, it seems like hell. Like I would absolutely have hated it. And you know, whenever you're doing a bachelorette party, there's, you know, you got your three girlfriends who are super cool. And then you got the one that's like, it's always about her and she's going to be in a bad mood. She's going to try to ruin everybody's weekend. Right. And then there's, you know, your third cousin from Iowa who's like, oh man, like all these skinny bitches. And, how, and I, I gotta like, now I gotta get a glittery dress from Revolve and get feather shoes. And she's just like, you know, she's trying to buy black market Ozempic so she can like quickly slim down to compete with all these other girls. Like, it's just, it's gotta be a nightmare. So I'm just saying, buck the trend. Your girlfriend, they really don't wanna do that. Like maybe the, the three of them that went to like, you y'all went to the same sorority, y'all wanna do that. But the, everybody else is like, are you, oh jeez. I mean, this is like a $5,000 weekend. And not on top of that, now we're all doing destination weddings. And so I gotta buy a, a dress for your wedding and a flight and and a hotel. And a, I mean, we, we gotta rethink some of this stuff. <laughs> I'm just so glad that I didn't have to do that. And I, it just, it seems like a nightmare. And every single, every single time we go out, no matter what place we go to, there's one of these bachelorette brigades. It's just such a thing. So I've, I've got to know, like, have you been invited to one? Have you seen this happening? It's not just here in Miami, but you know what it is like so far, the only place I've seen this is in Miami and it's here y'all. Sheer rear is here. Let me just be the first to tell you about this because you're not going to believe, I know you're going to think that I'm exaggerating. And I know you've been hearing me talk about the gym here in Miami. And, and I'm, I know you think that I'm exact and I'm not exaggerating. It really is a thing. It's insane. It's a new form of leggings that is very popular, at least at my gym. And I've noticed women in the area. I don't know if they're going to the gym or they're just wearing this look, but it ain't for me y'all. But here's what it is. But I also didn't think that I would ever wear a scrunch butt. But I, I wear scrunch butt leggings. I think they look. I think it's a great way to make your butt look even better. Um, and I remember when I first saw those, I was like, "What kind of thirsty bitch needs to wear leggings that give you a wedgie?" Guilty as charged. I'm I'm wearing them. I don't think I'll be wearing sheer rear, but never say never. Okay, what is sheer rear? I call them sheer rear. I don't know what they're really called, but they're like these leggings that they're like, they're like industrial strength, uh, lycra that just like squeezes all of your subcutaneous tissues all up into your butt area. Okay. And then the butt area is accentuated with like a band around underneath the butt and around the outside of the butt. Right. And then the actual cheek part is a different kind of material. That's almost sheer. So it's like it squishes all of your area, all of your subcutaneous tissues, all of your fat, everything up to the butt. And then right in the buttocks area, because it's sheer, it like really makes your butt pop out and like literally pop out because it's sheer in the rear. Okay, I bought the tights and I'm keeping the tags on because I, I really just bought them for YouTube. And um, <laughs> are you ready for this? <laughs> I don't think you are. So they're not actually see-through, but they kind of give the illusion. Let's go see what Brett thinks. Hey, how do you like my leggings? Ooh, I like, ooh, I like those. Yeah! <laughs> you do? Yeah! What do you call these? Those are the anatomy specials right there. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the cheek finders. <laughs> cheek finders? Yeah. Cheek holders? Yeah. Okay. A lot of these trends have, they start in Miami. Remember thongs? And listen, I'm not judging because in my generation, like when I first started taking fitness classes back in the day, 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 yeah, thong leotards were the thing. Thong, the thong, thong, thong. We would wear thong and then we would wear shiny tights and Reebok scrunch socks and Reeboks with the straps and at first there was only like, you know, that, those couple of women in your gym. I remember too thinking, oh my God, 
they need so much attention. They're so thirsty, although we didn't call them thirsty. I'm not sure we called them back then, I forget. But we would be like, oh, look at her. Oh my God, she just thinks she's so hot, right? And I remember the first girl in my high school that wore, I don't know, why would we have seen her in a thong? I don't know, maybe she was at the gym. I just remember like, everyone was like, oh, did you see so-and-so was wearing a thong? And then suddenly everybody was wearing thongs. Like every, even people who probably shouldn't be wearing thongs were wearing thongs. Like thongs were the thing. Like if you weren't wearing a thong, you just looked outdated. You just like didn't know what the style was. You know what I mean? So that's like right now I wear scrunch leggings, not because I necessarily want my butt to look rounder, but I'm like, I don't want to look outdated. There's nobody in this gym who's not wearing scrunch butt leggings. And there's quite a few who are wearing sheer rear. I'm not doing sheer rear. I don't think, I mean, I don't think I am. But again, never say never. But that's what I'm saying is like back in the day, I was like, I would never be caught dead in a thong. And then then I would never have been caught dead in like a full bottom leotard. I remember when I did um, my first consumer workout video, shout out to Eileen Sharon, and it was it was for Weight Watchers. And we had to wear leotards that were, they had, they weren't even full bottom. They were high cut, you know, on the hips and they the the back was like like a normal leotard bottom but it, because it wasn't a thong i remember thinking this is so outdated and conservative it looks so cheesy right because that's how trends happen so will sheer rear be coming to a city near you i don't know but the other thing is there are certain areas where these things like never catch on Right. So wherever you live, it might just be that people always, women included, will just wear like, you know, a, a comfy t-shirt and a pair of bike shorts and be done with it. And nobody wears makeup and, and nobody has to like, you know, wear the right outfit to go to the gym. And that is a blessing. I love that. But if I'm being completely transparent, I love going to a gym where people are just a scene. I love it. I love it because I like making in my own head. I'm not going to like make fun of them out loud. I mean, of course, I'm here talking about them, but I, I just love seeing trends. I love watching these things evolve and seeing how they're going to impact society. And, and I love going like, oh, wow, this is just like one person doing that. And then it like catches on. It's a trip. And I think it's interesting. It's, it makes for great people watching. And Miami is the mecca of great people watching. I say that Miami, don't be offended because I may live here someday, but I say that fashion in Miami, the way I describe it is hoochie or Gucci. You either dress like a hoochie or you're wearing Gucci head to toe. And by the way, I don't, you know, when I see people wearing like designer labels like Gucci, you know, or like Louis Vuitton, like all these and the purses and everything, there's so like, it, there's so much of that being sold that's fake that I don't know if anyone else does this, but now when I see someone with like a, you know, ex a expensive designer purse, I don't even think it's real. Cause I, you know, I mean, we, when, even when we were in Naples, which is supposed to be this like super rich exclusive area, like right next to the Starbucks was this boutique. And in the window was like Gucci and Bottega and, and, uh, um, Louis Vuitton. And I'm like, this is all fake. It was all fake. Cause I went, I'm like, what, why would one store have all this stuff? You know, you, you can't buy a Louis Vuitton bag for $80. And I don't know if you know this, but Louis Vuitton is, isn't leather anyways. Most of it's just PVC. You're just paying for the name, the logo. So now when I see people like with their Gucci shoes and it's just really super obnoxious, I just don't even assume it's real anymore. Like even on Housewives, I always think, are they buying that like in a little alley from a guy on a plastic table who has to cover it up with a, a tarp? when the police drive by. And don't get me wrong, I know I'm a hypocrite because I, I I bought a few luxury items recently, but I have also declared that I will not ever buy another pair of expensive designer sunglasses. I don't deserve them. I can't keep them. I don't take care of them properly. And I have, I have like three $12 sunglasses I got off of Amazon and I don't lose them. And I guess because they're $12, if I did, I wouldn't care. But I've had them for years because they're $12. And whenever I buy an expensive pair of sunglasses, I either lose them or I scratch them. And then I'm mad at myself. So why am I doing that? It's just dumb. It's a dumb way to, in my, in my opinion, spend your money any way you want. I would rather spend my money on experiences. And sunglasses ain't it. So after we left Tampa, 
Well, actually, we went out to, and by the way, I love it when I meet you guys. So I got to meet a bunch of uh, people who listen to the show. And I love it when you when you come up to me and you're like, I listen, Shaleen show. When you say that, you make my day. And then I just like relax. I'm like, oh, it's a cool person. Um, so I got to meet quite a few people, you know, who are cool enough to say, hey, let's grab a picture. And um, then, but we stayed out pretty, like later than we normally do on uh, Saturday night. So then I was like, Brett, we, we've got to change our flight so we can leave like much later, sleep in. What is going on with the whole, like you used to be able to, whenever you called a number, if you hit zero, you could get to the operator. But now with all these friggin' robot automated phone systems, it is such a nightmare, whether you're calling the airlines or a hotel, or even like trying to get a reservation. There's this restaurant here in Miami that Brett and I tried to just call to see if we could host the Shalene show meetup, we, we called, cause that's the first place we wanted to have it. We called there like every single day, multiple times. And you just kept getting stuck in automation hell. And it's, I mean, it's like, they're asking all these questions and they, they just don't want you to talk to a person ever. And th this is especially true with certain businesses. And it's annoying because they take you through all these prompts and it's like, they're asking all these stupid questions just for fun. They must be just for fun. Cause they'll say, okay, now I understand that you're calling for help. Press one. If you're calling for help and you gotta do that. And there's just too many words. And then they're like, okay, thank you. If I understand you correctly, state your name after the beep. And then you state your name. Okay. Thank you. And now for our records, please tell us your physical address. And then you give them that. And then your social security number and, and when were you born and what was your pet's first name? Like you have to give them all these prompts before they're going to connect you to an actual human being. And then what do they do when the human being gets on the line? They ask the same questions and I get so annoyed. I'm like, what was the point? What, what was that? Like wh who, where is that information going? Why did you need that information? Because I don't mind giving all that information. If by the time I get on the phone with your customer service rep, then I'm okay if they have all that information and now you can just solve my problem. But that's not how it goes. Then they get you on the line with this customer service rep who I, I think must get paid per number of words that they use because by then, my tolerance and patience is like through the roof. I'm, I'm getting so annoyed and, and they, they like, it's like they want to wear you down with word soup, you know? So you finally get an operator and they're like, hello, uh, it's a great day here. And I'm just going to make this up. I, I'm not going to like use a real airline. Um, it's a great day here at Johnson airlines. My name is agent Kelly. Um, and this call may be recorded today for security purposes or whatever they say for, for, for training purposes. I, I would also like to thank you for your patronage of like, meanwhile, my blood is just boiling because I just want to say, hi, we're just trying to change our flight. You know, and, but they don't even let you get to that. And they're like, we want to thank you for your patronage of flying. We know that there's several. There's so many choices when it comes to flying. And we want to thank you for flying with us to our many destinations. We know that when it comes to travel, you want the best possible service. And today I would like to find out from you, how may I help you? You're like, why, why are you doing this to me? Why, why so many words? Can you just say, how can I help? Like they would just say, I can see everything that you've answered to the robot and I can see everything here and I'm going to use as few words as possible. Uh, what's, what's the problem? How can I help you? Like if they said that I would be overjoyed, but they don't, they have this horribly long script that just makes your blood boil so that by the time you're actually talking to this person, you're, you don't even get to be yourself. It like brings out the side of you. I'm a very polite, patient person, except when I have to go through all the, you know, automation stuff to get to the customer service rep who has every single answer has this like script that they have to go through. I'm like, get to the point. Like you can't even hang up with them. Like you're like, okay, thank you. Thank you. You know, you, we, we've changed the flight. We figured it out now. And they're like, okay, Mrs. Johnson. So just confirming again that we have changed your flight 274 to flight two, six, four, and you will now be departing instead of departing and they're going through the whole thing. And you're like, oh God. 
I just want to hang up. And, and they're like, and we would also at this time like to thank you for j flying with Johnson Air. And they go through the whole script again. And I want to just hang up on them, but I'm afraid to, because like, what if there's like one last button they have to click to make it all like stick? It's just annoying. Can we use fewer words? I just have no patience for all the words, you know, and maybe it's my ADHD because I find I have these um, conversations in my head that I'm a little embarrassed to even share with you, but they're, they're these little conversations that I have in my head. They're like, I call them bitchy ADHD conversations. I would never say them out loud, but I'm, I'm thinking them almost at all times. It's like when I'm in the middle of a new obsession, anyone, 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 I'm in the middle of a new obsession. Like, okay, I am now searching this. I'm watching every single YouTube video on this particular topic that I can find. And I'm deep, deep, deep into a mental rabbit hole learning about this new thing. And I'm obsessed about it. And then someone sends me a text and I'm like, like in my mind, I'm like, do you not know that I'm busy? Do you not know that I'm thinking about something else? Do you not know that I don't want to be interrupted? And even when I turn on my do not interrupt, whatever, you know, DNS or whatever you call that, do not disturb on your phone. People still send you your messages and I still look at them, you know, so that's, that's kind of annoying, but it's just, it's that. And it's also the other times when I get kind of like, this is like when people are giving me details and I, I don't need those details and I don't know what to do with them, you know, and I'm not going to name names, but there's certain people in my life that when they're, they're explaining something, they're giving me all these other details where I'm like, what do I, but what do I, do you want, do you need me to do something with that? Is this for now, for later? Like what's supposed to happen with this information? I don't know. So why are you, why are you telling me? Why are you telling me when that person was born or what street it's on if I don't need to know this? And another thing about my ADHD is that, and I, and I know this is like the, it's, I'm just telling you my thoughts. I'm telling you what I think, even though I know it makes me not very likable and very, uh, and hypocritical. But I think it's very rude when someone interrupts me because of my ADHD. I will not remember what I was just about to say. However, I think it's perfectly appropriate for me to interrupt everybody else because if I don't, I'm going to also forget what I was just about to say. I know these things are not logical and I know it's rude either way, but like this is just, I'm telling you, these are my ADHD thoughts. Okay. In real time, that's what I don't say it, but I always think it. I also always think that, um, if I am trying to prepare for something like leaving the house, I don't understand how people who know I have ADHD, maybe it's that like, but also like I have friends who have ADHD too. And I'm like, how do you not know that, that you interrupting me right now is like, you're just destroying everything. You're destroying my chances of getting out the door and not forgetting 19 things because I have to, without, if I'm going to not forget, if I'm going to remember the seven things I need to remember to get out the door, like my keys, my phone, my headphones, I'm going to the gym, um, a water bottle, lipstick, my purse, you know, so, okay. Like, so there's like seven things I have to remember to get out the door. I have to mentally be going over this checklist because I don't have a physical checklist just to walk out the door. And I probably should, but I have to mentally be, keep going over this checklist, over the checklist, over my, over the checklist. And if someone keeps stopping me and asking me questions or even talking to me for that matter, I'm going to forget something. And I'm like, how do you not know that I need silence to get out of this house <laughs> and remember the things I need to remember? I'm not naming names, but these are just my ADHD thoughts. And I love that when I share these things and those of you who don't have ADHD, at a minimum, I love that you tell me it helps you understand a partner or your kid or your boss. Like I got that one recently. Recently, someone said, Shalene, just listening to your podcast so helps me understand the reason why my boss is so annoying. <laughs> Listen, I know it's, it's probably really, really annoying if you have a very laser focused brain that doesn't work this way to be around people like us, but that is just, these are the thoughts that go through my head. And sometimes they, I, I, in my head, I'm like, don't say it because it's not appropriate. 
And it's also, it's everyone's not living in my world. I'm living in a, a world that I have to figure out how to, to make do. I have to figure out how to compensate for the way my brain processes things. And that's just how it is. All right. So where will we be in um, two weeks? We will be in the south of France. We are landing in uh, Nice, France, and we're going to stay 10 days in, in Cannes, France. And that's all that we have booked. From there, we don't yet have a plan, but we know we're at least going to be there for six weeks. And we'll just see where it takes us. I don't know if we're going to plan, how much of it we're going to plan in advance, but I am so excited and I, I can't wait to take you with me. You know, so I'm, I'm going to bring my whole setup. I got to figure that out. That's going to be tricky when it comes to traveling. Like the lights, you guys can't see them, but the lights, and I've got this like little stand. And now because we're doing the podcast also on YouTube, you know, Wi-Fi is going to be really important. And, and this equipment, I, I got to figure this out. I got to figure out, like, do I need a special hard case to carry this stuff so it doesn't get thrashed? I don't know. But I will say this, definitely use Apple Air Tags. That's my travel tip for you because people are losing their luggage like crazy. And then at least you can kind of track it down with your Apple Air Tags. And if you have ADHD, those Apple Air Tags, get one for your purse. Anything that's of value, you can put an Air Apple Air Tag on it. You can track it just like your phone. For those of you who are watching here on YouTube, thank you so much for subscribing. Be sure to hit the like button or smash the like button. Is that what they say? Smash the like button. Leave a comment below. Tell me what part you thought was funny. Tell me what part you're related to. Tell me what things you are noticing with bachelorette parties. Um, I've got a really great episode, come, two really great episodes coming up for you. I'm not I don't, I don't want to say if it's this week because I'm not sure which is going to come first. But either way, if you hit the little bell, that will turn on your notifications and you'll know each time there's a new episode and leave me a comment below this YouTube video. And I, I promise I'm going to respond to them as, as many of them as I can. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and, and just allowing me the time to catch you up on what's happening in our lives. I really do appreciate you more than you could ever possibly know. You've given me the most valuable thing you have, which is your time. I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon.